You know, I always said sooner or later the wheels would really come off the Brexit bus, and I'd always said that. And I always said to the non-believers who say, oh, no, it, it, you, you've said it would happen. I said, I said, no, it would always happen after Brexit. And that was the start of this year. We're officially heaped. And what has Brexit really achieved so far this year? It hasn't really achieved anything. Um, apart from the nonsense about return of, again, imperial measurements, which, again, pointless play to the crowds. And, ooh, we're getting crown stamp glasses back on pint glasses. Wow. <laughs> The wheels are coming off already. We had in Parliament just last week an MP stand up and said, look, one of my um, constituents, a very big farm, is losing, uh, lost something over like 300 uh, odd thousand pounds because I couldn't get enough pickers in to come and pick the tomatoes. That was Brexit. And if you saw everyone was shouting, you know, it's, it's Brexit, it's Brexit. And, of course, the worried looks from Pretty Patel to Boris Johnson, they know they cannot sustain this sooner or later. They cannot sustain this idea that Brexit is a good thing and they can only keep so much hot air in that balloon for so long before it starts to deflate. And I think the deflation is going to come, especially now with these prices, these gas prices that are absolutely soaring, which many, many people in this country rely on to heat their homes. We've got winter very fast approaching. You've got a situation where gas prices are like, like 400 pounds. We've said before, people in this country are in a state of, if they were to get a surprise bill of about 400 pounds, they would find themselves bankrupt. This is going to push people into poverty. This is going to push people into more um, deprivation, having to rely on food banks. Even the Daily Mail uh, said today in a headline that we are going back to the 70s. Why did we join the European Union? Because we wanted to be part of their economic grouping. Um, so congratulations, guys. You're back to where we started. Um, <laughs> again, you've only got downhill here to go, and so far, your grand project has not shown any real serious fruit, which we always said it wouldn't. But today, we're going to jump into these, um, the stuff around the, the gas prices and these energy crises, which is going to cause quite a serious concern for a lot of people throughout the UK, especially this coming winter. So, as always, uh, thank you very much to all the people who do support the channel by clicking the like, share, and subscribe button. And, of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, as well as one updated link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much to all the people who do support the channel that way. So let's jump into this today from the Yorkshire bylines. The title, Amid Soaring Gas Prices, it emerges that Johnson promised lower energy bills after Brexit. With gas prices reaching record high levels and the cause of two fertilizer plants to shut down, sparking a crisis in the supply chain of carbon dioxide in the food chain, it has now emerged that Prime Minister and the new Community Secretary, Michael Gove, pledged, pledged back in 2016 that Brexit would deliver lower household gas bills for Brexit Britain. And of course, this, as you can see, is the uh, thing from the sun. You'll EU will never believe it. Boris promises cheaper household gas bills if Brits back Brexit. Of course, as you can see at the time, back from the 30th of May 2016, former Mayor of London claims that leaving the EU will mean ministers can slash the price of our gas bills. Anyway, into the article. The fertiliser plants at uh, INSEE in Cheshire and Billingham on Teesside, run by the US uh, company Central Farmers Fertilisers, have been forced to close due to the spike in gas prices that mean that the plants were running at a loss. The operation produces ammonia, a byproduct of this, which is CO2 or carbon dioxide, and some of the gases are needed uh, to produce urea, which is in excess is sold, including to the food supply chain businesses, where it is used as a 
as, as used in abattoirs and, of course, in packing. These closures have an immediate effect, which is also triggering a CO2 shortage. The modified atmosphere packaging, or MPA, involves blanketing products in gas or even a mixture of gases just before the pack is sealed. This keeps produce fresh for longer and extends the shelf life. CO2 is just one of the gases used. In addition, it is also needed for dry ice used to deliver frozen produce. The result is likely to add a very sense of growing post-Brexit crises surrounding the food supply chains, but will also have a huge political impl implications for a government when gas prices feed through to the customer into the consumer bills. Figures appearing on Twitter showed that Britain's national gas day ahead costs were around at least twice the level of the rest of Europe, which spread it was spread the prices between 134 to 135 per megawatt, compared with the 27 to 170 for France and Germany, for example. The figures were from LPC and Act, the data analysis platform for the UK's short-term electricity markets. Again, this is not going to be good. The COF, the CEO, sorry, of the U.S. company FC Industries, Tony Will, has arrived in the U.K. for crisis talks with the business secretary, Kersey Kwatang, in an attempt to try and restore the CO2 supply. CF Industries says it does not have an estimate of when the production will actually resume. And you can see his tweet for, for meeting with them. Again, it's not just this. We're also seeing that apparently about seven, I think, energy companies uh, small energy companies were potentially um, going to go out of business with apparently four further listed today that they may now announce that as well. And of course, now we get to the big promise back in 2016. Of course, in May of 2016, The Sun reported, e, you'll never believe it. Boris promises cheaper household gas bills if, Bre if Brits back Brexit. The report was based on a statement by Michael Gove and Boris Johnson and Gilsey Stewart for the Sun vote leave to cut VAT on fuel. The statement pledged that working people will be better off if we leave the EU and that fuel bills will be lower for everyone, saying that we believe working people will be better off if we leave the EU. The NHS will be stronger, class sizes will be smaller, and taxes lowered. We have more money to spend on our priorities, wages will be higher, and fuel bills will be lower. Leaving the EU is a great opportunity for us to take back control of our borders, our economy, and our democracy. Again, none of that has happened. In fact, pretty much the reverse of all those have indeed happened. So much for the promises of 2016. It claimed that the poorest households spend about three times more on their income on household energy bills than the richest households spend. As long as we are in the EU, we are not allowed to cut this tax, about a 5% VAT. The trio said that by voting uh, to leave, the government would be able to scrap this, quote, unfair and damaging tax. It isn't, uh, this isn't right that unelected bureaucrats in Brussels impose taxes on the poorest and unelected British politicians can do nothing. Uh, Johnson and Grove are now probably the most two powerful men in government and will be able to shave off that 5% VAT. But it may not even be notice noticeable if the cost of fuel as seen as the increase in the wholesale prices of about 400% in just the last two years. About half of the UK's electricity is generated from gas-fired power stations, so the gas price shock may very well be soon felt in electricity prices as well. So one question you have to ask is why are prices rising? And I think this does lead, of course, into, an, again, a larger picture that we are, remember, at this moment in time, really antagonizing our, again, what are meant to be our European allies. Um, they're not going to help us in, in this time of crisis. You've only got to look at why they've got so many low prices. In fact, if you remember, of course, under... Again, being in the EU, we were allowed to buy and sell excess electricity from the continent. We can't do that now after Brexit. So this is going to cause huge problems very soon. Um, yeah, good luck, guys. Good luck getting out of this. Remember, you voted for it. You, you believe the hype. And we warned you about it. We warned you about it. 
So why are gas prices rising? So CNBC are reporting that, they, that the piped national gas supplies from Russia have been slowed in recent weeks after outgoing German Chancellor Angela Merkel sought to ease the very long-running uh, concerns about the nearly uh, completed Nord Stream 2 pipeline, saying that further sanction, sanctions may be imposed if Moscow uses gas as a weapon. Analysts have suggested that the Russian state-owned gas company uh, Gazopon may be limiting its delivery of natural gas to Europe uh, it, to support its case for starting flows via the Nord 2 stream pipeline. Potentially, but we'll have to see how this goes. This is not going to play well at all. Um, as we've said before, Johnson is just going to be piled on, 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 more and more crisis. And people are just going to say enough is enough. Either the conservatives themselves are going to get rid of him, and that would mean completely getting rid of all the people on the front bench, which basically means at that point, the Brexiteers have actually lost a very significant um, argument and even market. So even though it's people like Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak are, you know, the prime candidates. Be don't be surprised if someone from completely left field comes out and wins. Uh, to say the next uh, MP to be to be in charge of the Conservative Party could, like I say, could be very interesting indeed. And not to mention the Conservative Conference is coming up, which is again going to be incredibly interesting to say the least. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button down below. And, of course, there are my links to my Patreon page and, of course, my one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee. We can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all 